is Chaos Cast, the Chaos Community Podcast, where we share use cases and experiences with measuring open source community health, elevating conversations about metrics, analytics, and software from the Community Health Analytics Open Source Software or Short Chaos Project to wherever you like to listen. Welcome to this episode. This podcast is sponsored by our friends at Sustain, a community of open source enthusiasts and professionals that care about the future of open source. Learn more at sustainoss.org. Today, I'm excited to talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion reflection, which is a project that we had in the chaos community to look at our own practices and how we can make our community more welcoming and inclusive. And I want to say thank you to the Ford Foundation for sponsoring this effort. And I'm now excited to also thank and welcome the team that has been working with us on this. And let's do a round of introductions. I'll start as the host. My name is Georg Link. I am co-founder of The Chaos Project and your host today. So welcome everyone else. Hello, everybody. Welcome in our podcast. I am Christy Progrid, the project manager of the GNOME Foundation, and I'm also the co-founder of the Open Source Diversity Initiative. Hello, everyone. I'm Selena Yang. I'm a co-founder and coordinator of an initiative from OpenStreetMap called GeoChica's OpenStreetMap. I'm currently working as a diversity, equity, and inclusion specialist at the Wikimedia Foundation. Hi, everybody. I'm Georgia Bullen. I'm the executive director at Simply Secure, where we're leveraging design as a transformative practice to change who technology serves. I also co-host the Sustain Open Source Design podcast as part of the Sustain Network, and I'm part of the audit team. Hello, everyone. I'm Ruth Kega. I'm a technical content manager and an open source advocate. I'm also part of Chaos DI working group and also a badging initiative maintainer. Hi, everyone. I'm Matt German Prey. I am a professor at the University of Nebraska Omaha in the College of Information Science and Technology. And I'm also one of the co-founders of the Chaos Project and a member of this amazing team. Hi, I'm Sean Goggins. I'm a professor of computer science at the University of Missouri in Columbia, Missouri, co-founder of the Chaos Project, and I actively coordinate the evolution risk working groups, as well as am one of the maintainers on Chaos's Augur software. I'm Elizabeth Barron, and I am the Chaos Community Manager, and I've been at Chaos since about 2020, and I'm super excited to be here today. Hi everyone, I'm Safaya, a graduate student at the University of Omaha. I am a member of the DEI Working Group and also a Chaos Badging Initiative reviewer. I'm very happy to be here. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone, for introducing yourself. And I'm, I'm super excited for all the work that you've done over this past year. But before we get into the meat of our recommendations, what we've learned, let's take a step back and share what has been the motivation for us to embark on this journey? Hi, this is Elizabeth. I can speak to that, Georg. I think our motivation was twofold. The first thing is we wanted to make sure that we were doing everything we can to be as attentive to diversity, equity, inclusion within the Chaos Project as possible. Obviously, our project cares a lot about community health and those issues are central to building a healthy community. So it was important to us personally and it aligned with the values of the project itself. And then the second half of that goal was to be able to share the process and the journey and the recommendations with the greater open source community so that other open source projects could also go through this process. And not everyone has the resources to do it financially or otherwise. So being able to share that What we've learned and how the process went with the greater open source community is a big part of why we're doing this. Thank you, Elizabeth. Anyone else has a few things to say about what motivated them? I think what Elizabeth describes, I would summarize as we're motivated to do better. And we know that if we don't look inward and understand what we're not doing well, we're not going to get more effective at supporting diversity, equity, and inclusion. So... I credit Elizabeth with helping to lead this within the chaos project with the other folks on this call. Yeah, I can say for myself as well that 
from the beginning, we've focused on being transparent, being open, always thinking about, okay, what are the barriers that people have for contributing? How can we encourage those who cannot make the meeting? How can we still include them in the conversation? So what are some things that you have learned from looking at the chaos project and the things that we had been doing to you know understand what works and where can we improve? Personally, when I started to join the chaos team, we had two discussions in the beginning on how we can contribute and what we can actually do to make our communities more inclusive. And it was a very eye-opening experience for me because I had the chance to hear other people's perspectives, what they think that can make a community inclusive and what we can do in order to make it all work. Other than having just the personal ideas and by working with a team that's in different parts of the world and has different cultures and It really helps me to widen my perspective on stats and it really helps me to get different perspectives on how we can approach certain problems. And what's even more important for me is that we came together and we give a solution to a certain issue or problem. And this really has helped me a lot and I've learned so much from this work. And I'm pretty sure that with uh, all these ideas that we have gathered, I see that we have a very bright future and we will be able to manage and to work on many important stuff. I think something that we also learn is that we're not alone in this. Many other communities are facing the same kind of challenges. And what has been really important is that we haven't kind of like really benchmark what we're doing with other organizations directly. But I think that having connections and like shortening the bridges between other communities have really helped us understand like the entire ecosystem in to what it means actually to be discussing diversity, equity, and inclusion in this kind of communities and open source projects. I think that for me, it's one of the biggest learnings that we had. So coming from the new contributors perspective, we've all been newcomers to the project and we've all had that experience. So one thing we learned is we had to like look at how newcomers in girls projects do they feel welcome or do they have like enough information to get started with the different working groups or do they know the code projects around chaos so we we had to look at that and look for recommendations which we'll talk about later on this session so that was one thing we learned from you know this process it sounds like we've learned a lot and I also wanted to ask you, how did you arrive at these learnings? What was the workflow? How did the group get together and work through this to arrive at these findings? I'll speak to that a little. So we had a core team at Chaos that was committed to working on this project, but we needed some external help, obviously, because we're not experts and we needed that third party external experience and expertise. So the three of us, Sean, Matt, and myself came together and we did a little outreach and we built this team of everyone. And in the beginning, you know, it's always challenging to find the tools that work for your team. So we did a little experimentation and we landed just for our team. What we found worked best for us was to meet on a Zoom call so we could have that as face-to-face as you can get in a virtual world interaction to really like build rapport with each other and get to know each other. And We're kind of spread out all over the place. So, you know, finding that time was difficult, but we were dedicated to doing it. And so we did find a time that worked for everybody. And then we would communicate asynchronously via signal throughout the week as we had different things that came up and uh, things we wanted to talk about. And then we kept our agendas and our minutes and things like that in a central Google Doc that we could all kind of contribute to as we went. And that really worked well for us. We met weekly for the beginning of the project. And then as things kind of tapered off, we change that to a bi-weekly cadence. From my perspective, a lot of the kind of things that we are bringing forward within the chaos project, it was a lot of listening. So as you heard in the introductions, there are so many people who have so many different experiences in so many different communities and so many different places in open source. And just listening to what the challenges around centering DEI are, I think they're often unique to different communities. And so as part of the chaos project, I think part of it was just for weeks, months, just talking through what those challenges are in other communities and then kind of reflecting on how they could connect with the chaos project. 
I don't really remember like if some concerns couldn't connect or some could, but I think a lot of it was thinking about how we could kind of understand what's going on in other places and make those part of what we do in the chaos project. So I think a lot was listening for the course of many months. So this is fantastic. You've done a lot of listening. You have learned a lot. And now you're driving action also and making improvements to the community. And what are some things that you've already implemented? I mean, th there are many areas in a community where people come. You've already talked about the newcomer experience, making people feel like they're belonging, they're heard. Do you have any examples for easy, simple things that we did and that others can do? For the newcomers' perspective, we opened up a channel in the Chaos Slack, the newcomers' channel, and we stay like one-on-one, -on -one, you know, office hour sessions, which I think, you know, is really helpful because some new contributors come in and joining the first meeting, they might not learn everything, right? But through these one-on-one -on -one sessions, they get to understand how Chaos works, which working group is there to join in, And even within like the new commerce channel, they get to interact with other newcomers as well and get to network with them and also know their experiences and learn from their experiences as well. So that's part of what we have for British term here in chaos. And we think that other communities, if they are not doing that, can also learn from us as well. Other things that we have done is I'd like to just kind of recognize Justin Flory who is also part of this team. And Justin has helped lead some of the efforts around a community survey about how community members feel included within the chaos project. And I know other people have been involved in that as well on this call. So that's one. Gary, you had also mentioned like, what are some of the easy things, you know, what are easy? I, a lot of these are, some of them are maybe more approachable. Some of them, they're bigger scale. So. One of the, the larger ones that we've been thinking about is how to focus on non-US centric community members. So we've been doing a lot of translation work as well. So all of our chaos metrics are now translated into Chinese, but the effort in something like that is really quite complex in terms of how you actually have a workflow to do something in your project. In our case, it was to release metrics. And then how you have to modify that workflow or that process to include something like that, to do Chinese translations. Building a community of, of amazing people in China to help is a lot of work. And so there are a number of things, maybe some are easier. I always kind of hate to use that word. Some are easier than others and some are more complex than others. And yes, these are translated into Mandarin. I think you touched on this, Matt, but I think it's very important that you kind of leverage, if, if I can use that word, leverage a community that's organically growing already. We have quite a few community members in China that are super committed to making sure that their own local communities are a part of chaos. And that's really helpful. So what chaos can do is support them. So they are able to communicate in the platforms that they can access easier than some of the ones that the main project uses. Google, for instance, and things like that, that not everybody can access. So just empowering them to kind of take things and run with them and do the things that are easiest for them and as inclusive as possible for them makes the whole chaos project a little more inclusive, I think. And so we help them run their own podcasts, for instance, in the Chinese language, and they can run meetups and things like that. But the key is having that group of dedicated people, I think, that are willing and able to take that work on is really important. I'll just jump in. So I was new to the chaos project. I'm not involved yet. And many of the other working groups have been aware of it for a long time. So this has been a learning experience for me about even just how the chaos project works, how global it is, where there are these communities, like everyone's been mentioning. And it's also been interesting to learn a bit around how the metrics get developed. So I'm wondering if, Sean, if you want to speak to the metrics strategy a bit that we've been working on, because I find it really interesting. It started a bit before I was able to join on a team and it's been interesting to follow. So I don't know if you want to dive into that. There's really two categories and well, three categories of metrics. The first are what we call atomic metrics, the lowest level of thing that you can measure. And those are usually derived from trace data. What we find with diversity, equity, inclusion metrics is often those have to be actively engaged in events 
or projects. So for example, I think Matt's going to talk a little bit later about the DEI badging program. That involves a peer review of checklists that events go through to sort of attest that they are following basic guidelines that this group has put together for supporting diversity, equity, and inclusion. And then more recently, we have consolidations of atomic metrics that are metrics models. And those do also include some of the more engaged, actively gathered DEI metrics in badging. While open source software today is powering critical infrastructure, the open source ecosystem as a whole is rapidly changing, facing challenges for governance, maintenance, maintainer burnout, funding, marketing, and more. Are you concerned about these things for your open source software too? Well, in the Sustain community, we discuss these challenges and share solutions for how to sustain open source in the long haul. We meet once per year in person, and the rest of the time we keep the fire burning in our discourse forum. Join our conversations at sustainoss.org and sustain OSS on Twitter. Let's take that as an opportunity to talk about the DEI badging program. So I can speak to that. The Chaos DEI event badging program is really one of the programs that we have in the Chaos Project that is meant to help, in this case, other event organizers think about how to best center DEI within their own events. So it's not something that occurs at the project level yet, but it does occur at the event level. And what we do is through an open and transparent review process, we ask event organizers to consider such chaos metrics as, are you attending to event demographics? So speaker demographics and attendee demographics. Are you attending to family friendliness? Are you supporting diversity access tickets within your event? And through an open and, and transparent on GitHub, through an open and transparent process, this brings metrics forward to event organizers to reflect on and better center DEI within their own projects. So it's something that we've been doing really over the course of the last year. And I think through the work of this audit team, it's really helped kind of improve what the DEI event badging program looks like and how it operates. And I will say to date, I think we've badged over 50 events, 60 events. So it's, it's been really successful and a great learning experience. Kind of like the earlier point of listening, a great learning experience for us as a project to learn from the event organizers. And I think we've been helping event organizers as well kind of reflect on their own DEI practices. Yeah, I think many projects have appreciated having some kind of peer reviewed project that illustrates that they are attending to diversity, equity, and inclusion. We think like the success of the DEI program. So the review process is a pretty interesting one. So reviewers, you know, are assigned to an event, right? An event application. And it's not just we tell them what to do, right? It's a conversation where we learn the process of how they implement that stuff. And we give recommendations. And over the time of badging conferences, we've been able to make very interesting changes where the event organizers go back to like the event website, for example, and they make changes from our recommendations. So it's a really interesting project. And the DI badging project is a whole topic in itself. And so I look forward to recording another Chaos Cast episode with everyone on this. Today's topic is on the reflection project that we had. So I'm going to get us back onto that topic. And We've already heard about some easy things that we've learned and implemented, some longer term projects. What are some things looking into the future that you're thinking about? Where can we take this work next? So speaking again, I was really excited when Matt shared the good news that we are taking this over the next two years and expanding on what we did last year. So for next steps, as regards to new contributors, we started like the workshops last year, the code workshops for the Olga software. And we are looking forward to, you know, expanding on that and, you know, making the new format roadmap more open and more interesting. 
trying to put together a better handbook to smooth in the process for newcomers coming into the chaos project and also share our work as we can share our work with other communities on how they can also be inclusive to newcomers. What was mentioned earlier, the survey that we worked on last year is going to get rolled out and then they will share the findings from that. So that's exciting. I think one thing I've been reflecting on also just while we're all talking is how like a lot of folks think about, oh, we need to do some DEI interventions in our project and they think I'm going to do it and it ends, <laughs> right? And I think a lot of what we're talking about here is how this is actually about shifting practice and how that takes time and then how you want to be able to reflect on and measure that practice change. And that's where things like the survey, which is something that then could be done in future years again, as well as like the metrics themselves and sort of these ongoing practices and community structures, I think will be really helpful in reflecting on how not just we make a change, but how we maintain that change, how we sustain the community around that cultural shift. I think that another area that we can keep working on the upcoming year is regarding the metric strategy. I know that it's a little bit difficult when you have to turn the strategies into the numbers, but it's a very important step for us because it will really tell us on how to improve our work, what are the things that we need to do in order to reach certain levels. So it's a very crucial part of what we're doing. And I guess that the big focus of our work would be on building a very good matrix strategy to use it for the future, but also to be able to implement it in the whole community and maybe other communities that are interested can have it as well as, as a lesson. And I think that met, I agree completely. And the metric strategy, of course, will include some of the things that we quantify, but also we've reinforced throughout chaos that you can't look at projects, numbers, or metrics, ratings, or scores and compare them to each other because each project has a different context. And it's the same case with diversity, equity, and inclusion metrics. We need to interpret them in the context of a project. Each project starts at a place and is moving in a direction. And if we can use metrics to measure progress, I think that's going to continue to prove more useful than using metrics as judgment. I think for me, the next steps are continuing the work that we've been doing. So one is kind of integrating the DEI conversation within the chaos project to all parts of the project, which is something that we've been working on. So for example, we, across all of the, the metrics working groups, DEI is now an explicit consideration about any metric, even if it's a metric that may not seem like it's necessarily has a DEI focus to it. So that's been a really good one. And I think the other thing for me is how do we, and this has been alluded to throughout the entire time, how do we take the work that we have done over the last year and help other communities do something similar? We have to understand that we've had great opportunity to be supported by the Ford Foundation and not every community has that opportunity. And so how do we take the work that we've done and make it accessible across a wide variety of communities to better center DEI in their own efforts. I would also just add one other thought here is that we started this conversation with our community early on in the process. We did not want this kind of internal reflection or any of the recommendations that came out of it to be a shock to anyone. And, you know, anyone who's been a part of our community, I hope already felt like Diversity, equity, inclusion is important to us. I hope that's in everything that we do. I hope that shows. But just having those conversations with everybody early on, I think really helped everybody just be more aware of what was going on, have it more of top of mind and just kind of solidified that, yeah, this is something that's very important to us and it should be important to everyone in our community as well. To your point, Elizabeth, about how the community sees it, from what I'm hearing People are saying, hey, Chaos is one of the most welcoming, inclusive communities that I've ever been part of. And so every time I hear that, it's super encouraging to just know, hey, we're on the right path. We are already doing something right and we're just getting better at this. So super awesome. Now, I always like to ask, where can people learn more? If someone got interest in the work that we're all doing, where can they follow up? Where can they learn more and also learn about new things that are coming from this group? Got it right here, Georg. So you can always join us at 
chaos.community. And there's a participate page, which shows all of our working group meetings. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth, I put you on the spot here. You can reach out directly to Elizabeth, uh, the community manager. And then we also have the chaos community Slack channel. And I think Ruth, you had pointed this out earlier. We have a channel in the Slack for newcomers and you're more than welcome to post comments or questions there. And we do check that all the time. So there are a couple of great ways to get connected. The next segment is for the podcast. We always like to do a round of value ads where we share something that has brought value, joy, or meaning into our life. And I can start us off. My recent value add was just the medical profession. And I had to go to the hospital for a medical issue. And I was very impressed with the way that they were just investigating what is the issue trying to figure out because it was not something that they had seen before. And so they had to do some research and doing some lab work and blood work and CT and whatnot to really try to understand what's going on and whether they needed to keep me in the hospital or not. So I'm happy that I was able to go home, but I'm just super happy with how professional, how really good the medical field has gotten and keeping people healthy. So that's my value add. So my value add is having had conversations because first doing a reflection in the hard conversation or having it leads you like to a better spot. So always try to have hard conversations. <laughs> Something that brought me joy, I don't know, value, I guess, as well, is that yesterday I passed the project management professional certification. It was one of my goals. So I'm happy for that. And above all, I'm so happy that everything that I've learned, I will be able to implement in the community and to hopefully improve and to make a super awesome place to be in like the open source in general. (laughs) My value add is that I own my first snowblower. I've lived in places where it's constant. That is staying a great deal. Yes, exactly. I've lived in places where there's so much snow. And I've always shoveled it. And then I bought a snowblower this year and it's amazing. And I snowblowed all my neighbor sidewalks and every last time it snowed, it made me feel really good. And I got a lot of thank yous from people for doing such a thing. So <laughs> I love this thing. Side note, we bought a community snowblower on our block and it's very, very well used. My value add is a book called String Algorithms or Algorithms on Strings. And it's value add because I'm teaching a string algorithm course this semester. And it's been a minute since I did that. So it's uh, bringing a lot of joy back into my life. Strings are fun. Oh, my value add has to do with my plants. <laughs> They've kind of suffered through the winter, but I found this light on Amazon that lets them grow as they should. So the light has brought light to my life. So that's my value add. There's a song in there somewhere. Mine is not really a value add to anyone that is not in Cincinnati, but I'm just proud that the Cincinnati Bengals, which is the football team here, is going to the playoffs. We're two games away from being in the Super Bowl, which does not seem like a big deal, but 1988 was the last time we came this far. So I'm reliving the 80s. I'll add that nobody had ever texted anyone about a Cincinnati Bengals playoff game because texting was an invented in 92 and their last win was in 91. And the second playoff game they won is the first road playoff game the Bengals have ever won. So Ever, yeah. It is a big deal. And I will also just say, I was 19 years old the last time, and I'm a grandma now. So I mean, it's been a while. <laughs> so I'm very excited. This is a very different tone, but I think that I'm like a little bit obsessed with lately is this one website called How I Experience the Web. It relates to a lot of the work that we do. It's kind of an art project. I'll drop the link in. It feels like a very different nature of what everyone else has said. But I think what I really love about it is it's its own little like encapsulated experience about sort of all of the challenges on the internet, which is a lot of what we work on at Simply Secure. (laughs) And that's just sort of the like challenges that are brought by ads and pop-ups and the sort of commoditization that leads to a lot of the harms that we experience online. So I just, it's a project I keep turning to uh, because I think it's really cool. (laughs) And I've been thinking about how we 
build experiences that engage people in what we otherwise normalize, which I think is, I mean, maybe relates to our whole conversation, but not a snowblower. So it's a little bit different. And now it is time to say thank you. Thank you, everyone who joined us today for this awesome conversation. Thank you to the Ford Foundation for sponsoring our DEI Reflection Project and extending that support into two more years. Super excited to see what we'll come up with. Thank you, dear listener, for joining us today. To stay up to date on future episodes, subscribe for free to this podcast on your favorite podcast app. Share this podcast with your friends and colleagues. If you have ideas for future episode topics or would even like to come on as a guest, please email us, podcast at chaos.community. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Until next time, your chaos community.